He never said, I was, and he never said, I will be. What he said was, I am. Why is that? Welcome to episode 52 of The Real Truth About You. Scene one, Apple, take two. Welcome to the show. Well, welcome to the show. My name's Will Sinclair, and I'm your host for today. This is the show where we help you to discover your true and amazing self from the inside out. Because when you take care of the inside, the outside looks after itself. You are an amazing person, you are fully human, and you're also divine. Well, last week I, uh, um, you like my disco music here? Last week I talked to you about the cat that kept uh, walking 11 kilometers to our door and three times he'd been taken back and three times he came back and, or he was here and then three times he got taken back home. He has to walk 11 kilometers through coyote country, through the bush, down a highway to our doorstep at the camp that we run here. And uh, I said I'd keep you abreast, and uh, Jerry Dini says, hey, he fire me an email and says, let me know what happens to the cat. And, well, a week later, after it was taken back for the third time, it is back at my door. Yes, the cat came back. A little bit worse for wear this time, though. Looks like he got into a bit of a scrap. He has some hair missing underneath his neck, and... Uh, a little puncture wound, but he's okay. He seems fine. He's in good spirits. Been feeding him, and it's time to go out and buy cat food now. Maybe he's here to stay. I don't know. There's got to be something to this, though, because that's quite far for a cat to come, and how does he even know how to get here? But the cat's here now. He has four white paws, and uh, I think his owner and their kids used to call him Socks. And until they come and get them, I think that's what I'll call them for now. Anyway, so i got to go up and buy cat food now. I've been making them some cat food. We had some uh, old meat stuff that we ground up and we've been giving them some. Anyway, the cat came back the very next day. <laughs> the song's coming true. <laughs> well, I'm really happy to say that this uh, episode is brought to you by Ray Bhutan in the team at Performance Realty. And uh, Ray Bhutan, like I said last week, is just an amazing guy. And uh, he's helping us out a lot here at the camp. He's very community-oriented. And his team at Performance Realty really want to help you to find the home that you want, that, that you really desire. This is such a beautiful area, Moose Mountain uh, area to live in. Uh, we don't have like mountains here, but I guess when you live in the flat prairies, anything that's uh, bigger than flat is called a mountain. And we are part, I live in the Moose Mountain Provincial Park. And in this whole area in Carlisle area in the southeast of Saskatchewan is just beautiful area as far as I'm concerned. So if you're looking for a dream home by a lake or you're just looking for a home somewhere to live in, then you know what? Give a uh, Ray, Jody, Chad, or Tracy, a call or a text. Just fire them off at 306 575 8575. That's 306 575 8575. And they're standing by to help you with all your real estate needs. And uh, you can also look for Ray on Realty, I think it's Realtor.ca, sorry about that. Uh, you can look You can uh, look for Ray on Realtor.ca, and I'll have this all on the website, therealtruthaboutyou.com. So anyway, thanks, Ray, for uh, chipping in and helping me to feed uh, my family and myself and uh, sponsoring the show. So thanks a lot. Anyway, I want to talk to you a little bit about... Uh, uh, time. We talk about time, and, and I want to relate it to what God said to Moses when when Moses asked him. He was God appeared as this burning bush on the mountain, and and uh, he asked God. He says, "Okay, 
if I have to tell people that I met you and I have to go down this hill, who do I say you are? Because they're going to say, who are you talking? Who, what, who are you talking to? Right. And if I say I met God, so well, what God, what's God's name? So God said, I am. Right. He never said I was. He never said I will be. He said, I am. And that's quite a significant statement, I'm sure, and, it's, and we've translated it into English, but it seems to stand on its own. Um, there's something very specific about being I am. Not I will, not I was, and not I will be. It's not past, not future, but present. And how that relates to time and the illusion of time. One of the things I've, I've discovered on my journey is that I used to get caught up in my past all the time. Uh, I talk, I've talked to you before about abuse and things like that in the childhood, and, and I still had a good childhood. I still came from a loving home, even though there was a lot of dysfunction in there. And I uh, still love my parents, and they still love me. And uh, But I lived a lot in my past, and I, I blamed my mother a lot. And what was happening was every time that I got into that story, it was just exactly that, a story. I don't mean a fictional story, but a story that would get caught up in my life. And every time I would tell it, then my life got re-caught up in the story, right? Which wasn't the reality. It's a perceived story. It's from my viewpoint, how things happen from my viewpoint. And we all know that things don't always happen. They're always not always the same as they appear. And But I would get caught up in this past that, oh, the reason I'm like this is because, you know, the reason I don't have any confidence is because it was stripped away from me, right, through abuse and through emotional games and that kind of thing. And, and that's why I have no self-confidence or I, I can't do this. I never succeed at anything. And I would tell myself and even counselors would tell me, you have a little boy inside of you who's been abused all his childhood life and into his adult life. So you, you, all, you, all you know is how to abuse yourself. So you abuse yourself over and over. You, you start projects or start a business and get to a certain point of success and you make sure it fails. And it's something that's predisposed in you almost, it's built in. But really what was happening I was getting caught up in that continual story. I was living in the story of the abuse. I was living in that past, that past story of abuse that I was. But that doesn't even exist anymore. The past is gone. And every time I brought it up, I lived in it. And the more I brought it up, the more I lived in it. The more I saw all the things that were wrong, all the things that weren't happening right and uh, at that time and how things could have been different. And I would think, gee, if, if I just was treated differently or if I was, um, you know, given more confidence or helped more or pushed more or encouraged more, then maybe, maybe I could have been this. Maybe I could, who knows what I could have been. And I just ended up just living and living and living in that story and not even realizing that I was living in it, that I was stuck in it, that that was becoming my crap pile, that I, I, that I was just dwelling in it and it became so much a part of me that it was like dragging baggage everywhere I went. Every single place I went, I dragged all this baggage from this story around. And I would tell this story to anybody. And it wouldn't just be telling the story as in, hey, you want to hear about my life? Telling the story would be being a negative person or being a person who was struggling to be positive and so wanted to be something and so wanted to be positive. But when I talked to other people, all this junk would just come out. It would be, it would be like when a volcano erupts. And then you live in all the loneliness and the depression. That's all the surface stuff that erupts from all this story that's inside that, that, that I just allowed to build up and I kept living in and kept recycling and rehashing. And so all these eruptions on the surface would happen. There'd be loneliness, depression, anger, sadness, and, and even um, 
suicidal thoughts. And I even attempted suicide at one point in my life. And, uh, you know, all those kind of things were happening because I was rehashing and living in the past. Now, you might have a past like that. And you might really resonate with what I'm saying, and or you might not. You might have had what's you know normal upbringing. Like I've, I know some some people who are very uh, influential, right? And and they had just a normal upbringing. They they didn't experience any of that kind of stuff, and they they figure they have no story to share, but they really do. They always have a story to share, and you may have had a past where it was a happy past. Right, and but everything when we live in that past, when we live in that happiness of the past, or we live in all the memories of the past, and I, I don't mean just remembering happy moments, or oh, I remember when, oh, do you remember that song, or things like that, or I remember when we were kids, we did this. I'm not talking about that. I'm not. I'm talking about dysfunctionally going back into the past. I was happy when I was a kid, or I was sad when I was a kid. And, or I had a great upbringing, uh, but right now things aren't really going the way I want them to, or whatever it is, right? Because our life is never perfect in that sense. We never seem to live in that uh, perfection of life. And you know, we try to, and we aspire to all the time, but we don't always live there. And so when we get caught up in that past story, then we get sucked into it every single time. And it sucks everything. It sucks life out of us. And it sucks, um, you know, it sucks in our brains, our being, our spirit. And it just like consumes us. And the more we live in that story, the more we are living in that past. And that past does not exist. That past does not exist anymore. It is gone. It is gone to never be again, ever, ever again. It doesn't exist. The past is gone. So when you live in that past, you're living in the present, but you're living in the stress of the thoughts that are in your head. And it's causing stress. And all that stuff, if you've had a negative upbringing like I have, like I have had, a lot of that stuff, my mother always says, stress can cause all kinds of ills. You know, in other words, some of the aches and pains that you feel are caused by stress. And I'm pretty sure that your body, from what I've learned on this journey, that a lot of the aches and pains that I feel from my, in my body and that you might feel, a lot of them come from the past. They're coping me mechanisms. They're, they're your body trying to tell you something. And this is still part of the journey that I'm on, the discovery that I'm on in this area. But I, I'm, I'm pretty convinced that a lot of that comes from, from your past, from dwelling in the past and your body trying to tell you things. And when your body tries to tell you things, that's a good thing. That's a good thing to celebrate. You know, and I'm not saying don't go to the doctor. I'm not saying anything like that or don't seek any medical advice. Or, But we all have to go through what we have to go through. But a lot of that can be from your past coming up and you're, and it's manifesting in some kind of pain or ache or something. And I, I, I found, too, that I was a future thinker. Like, as I was moving through my life, I always imagined a strong future. I imagined myself as a pilot. I imagined myself as a speaker on stage. I imagined myself as a famous, because I was really into music, famous musician. And that was one of the things that I did. That I think music, getting into the music industry at an early age, when I was like 13, 14 years old, I think getting into the music industry for me uh, was a, a coping mechanism. It was because as soon as I put a guitar around my neck, people looked at me and, and I liked that. And so I delved more and more and more into that. And I saw myself as a very successful, popular musician, fame, fortune, all that kind of stuff. And then I also saw myself as a businessman and, and, and strong into business. And I was always looking for new ideas. And, and like I said before, I self-sabotage myself and everything. 
I'll put myself down. I would, I would say, well, you're good at it right now, but you're never going to really get there. You're never going to get there because either you're not good enough or you just don't have the stamina or whatever it is. And all the stories from my past that I would just keep telling myself for my future, I would tell it in the present and for my future. But I always saw in my mind, like an athlete, like a, an athlete, when they say like when an athlete runs a race or does a high dive, you know, or something like that, especially like in the Olympics, when they actually go to do the, when they actually go to do the dive or do the run, they've already done it a hundred and hundred, hundreds and hundreds of times. And now they're just going through the motion. And as part of the, the, the sports psyche, you go over it in your mind, every minuscule thing, your muscle movement, this, the way you stand on the edge, the way your toes stand on the edge of that b- platform, ready to go. And once you get there, you go through the motions. I know when, uh, because I spoke a lot for a living um, on the side, but I would go and before I went, I always imagined myself speaking. I always imagined what I was going to say, what I was going to do, how I was going to walk, what I was going to wear, what the people are going to be like, how I'd respond to things, how I would dramatize things. And I always pre-visualized it in my head and before I ever went onto a stage or in front of a group of people. And I would see myself always in the future as successful. But what I discovered was it brought with it a lot of anxiety. A lot of anxiety to perform, to have to do good, to really want to do good. And I always thought, because I was a future thinker, that, hey, that's a great thing. And I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but just hear me out. I always thought it was a good thing. I always thought that being a future thinker, right, and, and envisioning something good in the future, even even like giving money away, like doing things for people who are poor and all those kind of things and, and good deeds and all those, everything that I imagined that I was going to be, I discovered was because I didn't like who I was today. I didn't like who I was today. And so I always projected a better future me. I didn't like who I was today. So I was always living either in the I was or the I will be. And I rarely, if ever, lived in the I am Because I didn't like the I am. I didn't like who I was. And that's why I always blamed it on my past and projected a positive future without even realizing it. People thought I was just adventurous and courageous and a risk taker and try things and I'm always thinking of new stuff. But it was because I didn't like who I was. I hated who I was. I did not love myself. So if I can't love myself today, how could I ever love myself tomorrow, which also doesn't exist? The future does not exist. It is only in your mind. It is only in your mind. The past is gone. All that we have is the present moment, the I am. And you may have heard it called the I am experience. It's when you realize that there is no future and there is no past. There is only the present moment. And I've said this before a lot. If you were to ask a tree or a bird or a mountain or the stars or anything other than us, another human being, what time is it? They would have no clue what you're talking about. They would have no clue what you're talking about because there is no such thing as time. And and just bear with me for a minute because I can hear a lot of you probably saying, what do you mean there's no such thing as time? Of course there's time. There's today, there's tomorrow, there's yesterday, there's an hour from now, there's two hours from now. We, we 
create this illusion of time. We say things like, I'll see you tomorrow, or I'll be back in a few, or we'll say, time is money, or we'll say, time management skills, or we'll say, it's a 24-hour clock, you know. I wish I had more time in the day. And all those kind of things, and it just reinforces the illusion of time. Where time, technically, does not exist. When we, we have created a measurement system of, of hours and seconds and minutes and nanoseconds, but it's a measurement tool. It's just a tool. And we've become slaves to that. We have other tools too. We measure distance. We measure weight. We measure temperature. But we don't, we don't hold ourselves to that as much as we do time. For some reason, we believe that time exists. And what meditation and all the, the gurus and the Buddha and Jesus and everybody that anybody that's really connected with God and connected with themselves in deep and intimate ways has always done it by eliminating that illusion of time. Because with God, there is no such thing as time. Even the Bible says that a, a thousand days is but a year to God, and a year is but a thousand days. There's no concept of time. No concept of time at all. It's just an illusion. It's a measurement tool. And yes, do we need it? Well, we've divided it up into hours. We, we get paid for the hours we work or whatever we do. We trade off hours for money. We do certain things. We have to meet somebody at a certain time. So uh, Eckhart Tolle calls it clock time. When you live by clock time. So there is a sense that we need to use clock time, but we cannot live in clock time. I always thought that when we do meditation, we had to somehow slow down our life, slow down our thoughts, slow ourselves down, and I had the illusion of slowing down time to connect with a timeless God. And then after I listened to Eckhart Tolle and The Power of Now, and I realized what everybody else, every other teacher I've heard talk about, there is no time. There is only the present moment. The present moment. That's all that ever, ever exists. And if you want to connect to God in the ways that you've never connected, if you want to discover God in ways you've never discovered, if you want to see God in ways that you've never seen or experience God in ways that you've never experienced, then you need to let go the illusion of time, at least for the period, if I can say period, um, that you're in that connection, in that moment, it, you become aware that there is only the present moment. How do you do that? Well, part of it is is sitting in silence. People like Mother Teresa were, were really big on sitting in silence. She would sit in silence for hours on end. She always said if, if she had a, a busy day, she would spend more time before her busy day in silence. Because silence brings you to that point where you can just live and experience the present moment. Not the stress of the past that doesn't exist or the anxiety of the future that also doesn't exist. But to be fully alert, fully aware, fully living and fully being in the present moment where God exists. If you ever wonder how to do that, when you're in the moment of silence, when you're trying to quiet your mind, to slow down your thoughts, 
to slow down your life so that you can hear that present moment, experience it, be in it. Try touching something. If you're sitting down, touch your leg or touch the chair and just feel that. Feel that sense. What does it feel like? Is it a hard chair? Is it soft? Is it prickly? As you feel your body and you feel an itch, experience the itch. Experience if there's a little pain in your leg, experience that pain. Just feel it. Because all those things are drawing you back into the present moment. Because you'll notice when you sit and you experience, when you feel your body, when you can feel the cold air on the tip of your nose as you breathe in, you're not thinking about tomorrow. You're not panicking about leaving the stove on. You're not thinking about your abused past or whatever is in the past. You're focused on the present moment and what is unfolding in the present moment. And that is the key to inner peace, to unlock that inner strength, the inner joy that's already in you, to begin to experience the God within you. It is truly a beautiful journey. Sometimes it's painful as things come up because in that awareness of the present moment, sometimes God shows you things from your past that you don't have to delve into because one thing I've found is God does all the lifting. God does all the heavy work. You just have to allow it to happen. You just have to be there and allow it to happen. And then you'll notice throughout your day, you'll spend more and more time, if you can call it time, being in the moment, being in the present moment. You'll be less and less anxious. And I'm talking about over a period. It does take time. It does take a while for it to, for the, it's like anything. It's like when you, um, when you want to uh, exercise your body, when you want to be fit and you want to have muscle tone and all that kind of stuff or lose weight, you have to exercise. You have to do certain things. And when you want inner peace, you have to go through the process of doing un the undoing, right? So it's like, it's, it's a sense you're doing, but you're doing nothing in a sense. You're coming to a point where you're just allowing God to do the heavy lifting, to show you things, and to heal you of things. It will just happen. You don't have to go make it happen. I always thought I had to make things happen and do things and turn away from bad things. And, and I'm not saying, like, if it's, I mean, if a stove is bad, a, a, a heated stove is hot and can burn you, well, then don't touch it, right? There's common sense, right? And there's a, there's, your body senses things that you shouldn't be doing or close to. But most of the things that we always class as sinful in nature, which really is just a separation from God. Sin is a separation from God. It's not necessarily the act itself. But when we experience something, we, we can find healing in God as we go through this journey. Right? Instead of putting ourselves down and allowing ourselves to be robbed of all the joy and then we replace it with guilt because we sinned, per se, right? Just allow God to heal that. Allow God to fill you with joy because the more you realize, the more you come closer to God. And not even come closer, per se, but you become more aware of your closeness with God your union with God. Jesus said, may they be one as we are one. And that's what we're striving for. And you'll find along the journey that this striving is actually an allowing, allowing God to do and allowing God to be so that we can be. 
and we can be free. So anyway, thanks so much for listening in today. So don't be I was, don't be uh, I will be, be I am, and live the I am experience. Okay? Well, it's been great being with you here in this episode. Remember, if you're looking for a home in this southeast corner of Saskatchewan, give Ray and Performance Realty Team a call. 306-575-8575. And thanks for tuning in today. I really appreciate that. And if you know somebody who needs this message, then would you do me a favor and would you uh, either show it to them or download it for them, put it on a CD for them? I have to say, Ray Bhutan, thank you so much. He... He goes into different places and he lets people listen from his phone to these podcasts. And Jerry Deeney in the UK, thank you. You're one of those guys that take each episode and when somebody needs something, you send them the episode. And I really appreciate that. This is awesome. And so thank you so much. And, and I know a lot of you are doing things like that. And I'd love to hear from you, you know. I'd love to hear from anybody who's listening in. So remember... Um, you guys are awesome, and I'd really love you to go to my the website, therealtruthaboutyou.com, and you can download episodes there and share your light, share your love, be lighter, be brighter, and remember that you are loved, you are loved, you are loved, and also, you absolutely rock. Rock.